Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Cyclical Investors Club YouTube channel. My name is Corey Kramer. Today, I'm going to be taking a look at Quanta Services stock, ticker PWR. This one came in by request down in the comment section of one of my other videos. If you have a request you'd like me to take a look at on the channel, just put it down in the comments. I'll get the ticker on the whiteboard behind me, which I'm almost caught up. I think within maybe the next couple of weeks, I might be able to do it three or four weeks. Um, and I'll make a video for you. If it's a stock that's in the S&P 500 like Quanta, I post those on YouTube for free. The rest I post over on Patreon at the $5 tier a month level. You can request basically any stock um, and I will make a video for you or just give you feedback and a message if you want. Um, and those links will be down in the description. Also, if you join the Patreon at $5 a month, you can get a big discount if you ever decide to join the full Cyclical Investors Club service over on Seeking Alpha. And I also have free tiers for all these as well. Um, I've been really busy this summer, so I haven't done too much with the free tier stuff. But once we get into the fall and the winter, when I'm at home um, in the house a lot more and have more time to read and things like that, I'll be putting out more regular free content there as well. So you can check that out. And then I post all the YouTube videos on Patreon as well. So as always, this is not individual investing advice. This is just how I analyze stocks. So this is going to be a little bit different video than most of my typical valuation videos um, because Quanta is kind of unique. And the if you haven't seen from the title yet of the video, this is going to be about why I kind of missed this, um, the return, the recent returns in this stock. Like, so if we go pre-pandemic, yeah, that's about pre-pandemic. So now roughly stocks up 563 percent um, always nice to get a gain like that if you can and i don't own this stock and i don't even think i track it yet <laughs> um, and so this video is gonna, going to explain why that is so if you i'm going to make a couple more of these videos where i sift through stocks quickly um, I have one that I definitely needed to do this month. I've been trying to do about one a month. Basically what I do is I go through the mid cap index. I go through like anywhere from like 25 to 50 stocks and I just look at the fast graph quickly, assess whether it's something that kind of fits my strategies and something I want to track, whether it's something that's just fits in another category too hard, not enough quality, some reason I might not want to invest in it. And I, it enables me to, especially using fast graphs, which there is a 25% off link down in the description for fast graphs if you would like. Um, I just, um, I can go through those stocks really quickly. So one of the things that you do sometimes when you're going through really quickly is there's a lot of advantages to it because you can examine a lot of st stocks initially pretty fast. One of the disadvantages is you're not doing like really deep research up front, right? So you can have stocks kind of slip through your fingers, which I think it's not, I'm not totally certain that's going to be the case with Quanta over the long term yet, but definitely over the medium term, it has, it has been the case. So this is one that I totally missed. So I'm going to explain to you why. First, let's go back pre-pandemic before crazy, anything crazy happened. Okay. So this is what we would have been looking at then. So if I was just sifting through, which I probably have done and looked at this stock before, I know it's super popular now. People are talking about it a lot now, now that it's in the S&P 500. But back um, five years ago, I don't think I ever even heard of it before. Maybe they changed their name. They have a different ticker, like a ticker that doesn't match their name. So maybe they changed their name or something. I'm not sure. But anyway, um, what I would have done is I would have looked and I would have seen they were in the construction and engineering business. And I would have pretty much immediately put it in the too hard category. And here's the reason why. So a lot of the ways construction and engineering businesses work is they basically put bids out for contracts that need constructed or engineered, right? Um, and what can happen is particularly when there's high demand and so more people in the business so you can imagine more bids are going in that they can get too aggressive on bidding for projects all right and then a lot of times what happens is people are looking at like their 
future order book or whatever. I'm not sure exactly what you would call it. Basically, the business of that they've earned that's going to come in the future that they had their bids accepted, and they look at that as future income. But the problem is like future profits. But the problem is if they underbid those too much, it can cause really big problems because they're obligated to build out those projects at a loss, right? So what you can see happen sometimes with these companies is they get really aggressive. In some ways it's like insurance, you know, they get too aggressive on their um, policies and they don't charge people like aggressive with the pricing and they don't charge people enough. And then when the claims come in, <laughs> they find out that they weren't charging people enough for the premiums, right? Or businesses or whatever the insurance so it's kind of like that so you're placing a lot of faith in management to stay rational even when there might be incentives at times to um, try to get that extra business by bidding low right so i learned this lesson the hard way i owned one of these back hmm 20 in the 20 teens here and it was um construction engineering for like pipelines and stuff, which is part of Qantas business. But that's, I think it's the electrical stuff that um, that's pushing the stock higher right now. Um, and basically they went, they went bankrupt. They ended up going bankrupt. Um, they merged or bought another company that was going bankrupt and then they eventually went bankrupt too. They did the same thing. So during this fracking bust, which is basically what that was part of, and you can see it in Quanta's earnings here. They Their earnings fell 44% in 2015, which is kind of when this started. Um, so yeah, I lost money on that and I just learned enough from that to know, I don't, the type of analysis that I do, I don't really have the ability to know whether they're underbidding or overbidding. I mean, um, or what future project costs are going to be. and. And so I've basically just avoided all these types of businesses since then. So that's the main reason why I would have avoided it. Um, the other reason, it's not, these guys specifically haven't been crazy cyclical. Their earnings to fall about 40 to 45% during these down years. That's moderate cyclicality. So they've managed, it looks like they've managed that pretty well. I could take an earnings analysis and work something out here um, and try to come up with with something but it would be it would be a little tricky because just because this is what it's been during this time doesn't mean it can really just a couple big projects that go wrong can just toast these companies sometimes so that's not to say it would have been a bad invest like it would have been bad but you can see that this recent growth is completely new. So this comes into the other kind of issue with the way that I usually analyze stocks. With a stock that's been with a business that's been in business a long time, that has a long earnings history, I use past cycles to try to estimate the future cycles, right? And we can see that in this case, so far, it doesn't appear like that would have been a good way to predict future earnings, right? Because Earnings, they fluctuated a lot here. If we just look at the stock price from like around the peak going into the Great Recession to the peak going into the pandemic, this is a stock that only earned 1% a year. So for what, 15 years or something? No, one, two, three, 12 years, it um, earned like nothing basically. If, when you think of inflation, we had a little bit of inflation. So, so basically it went 12 years with nothing. Um, in terms of the stock price. And if you look at going into that, what it looked like, right? We have 400% earnings growth, 130%, 28%, 33%. Like these guys looked like they were unstoppable, kind of like right now. Um, and then, you know, the PE of 40, basically PE. Um, but the main thing is these, if you think earnings are going to grow at say, 25%, which was kind of what they had priced in forever, or for at least a decade, and then they declined for four years in a row or three years in a row, you're going to have um, a bad stock price reaction. So, and stock price wise, it was down probably about 70% um, during the Great Recession. So, definitely capable of falling 
deeply. So that gets us back to today, where if I was using kind of this earnings trend, I'm not sure exactly what I would have, we can see what, let's go to like 2018 from 2007. Yeah, that looks like somewhat reasonable, although they had 43% growth that year. So this would be 14% earnings growth. Um, if you went in, that's point to point, not including the downturn. So this might be more realistic. So like 12% earnings growth, that's probably, and you have like a couple cycles in here. You have the recession, you have kind of the industrial recession after that. So, and then they managed to pull out, you know, 12%, 10, 11, 12% earnings growth. So this probably would have been a decent long-term earnings growth to try to um, gauge what it might be in the future, which it would be tough to do that, but that would have probably been a decent estimate before we got into like pandemic, um, electric car, electrification, all the AI, everything else that people are super bullish on now. So now we look at today and it's 30%, 40, 20, 15, 30, almost 30 again. In the future, analysts are, let's call it 15% earnings growth and the stock trades at a 30 something PE. So if they actually do grow at 15 or 20%, if they grow at 15 to 20%, this PE is reasonable if they can do that for like the next 10 years. Um, so that secular growth trend of AI, data centers, electrical grid um, type of things that they do. Um, I'm not an expert, obviously. I just read a little bit of their annual report. Um, that could be in a secular growth phase. I mean, it's totally possible they might be able to do it. And I would say the evidence recently is that, you know, there's a decent chance, right? So this is one where I wouldn't just like poo-poo the current um, earnings rally. I would just know the history. I would, I would want to know the dangers. I probably wouldn't want to pay a 32 PE, um, just being me. More like a, if I thought they could grow 15%, like a 25 PE maybe, 20 to 25, you get in there. I mean, what do we have here? Yeah, so like right in there um, during that downturn, that definitely could have been a viable range if you believed in the long-term secular growth story. Um, so I'm, I'm probably not gonna... Now, if we had a recession and these guys sold off just as part of that recession, then or part of some other reason that didn't really have anything to do with like the underlying growth story I, I would consider coming in and maybe buying a little bit but it's really just not a great fit for what i do because i would probably i mean to buy it during this kind of growth phase because i know that it can end <laughs> either the secular growth can end or the specific business execution can end I will say these guys look like they've done like a fantastic job managing the business through the past 20 years. So I don't have any reason to believe management would screw things up. Um, so that does definitely, that would give me some confidence. So it would really be more probably a competition, secular growth story. Um, I mean, when other people come in and start bidding for contracts and things like that, and they start undercutting these guys, um, the question is, what are they going to do? Are they just going to let that go <laughs> and say, sorry, you know, we're, we need to make money. Um, or, you know, is it, and, and there could be other aspects to their business too. I didn't look deeply into, I mostly wanted to talk about why I pretty much completely like avoided this and didn't even really look at it. Um, and that will happen sometimes. I know there's going to be but when I think of all the other construction and engineering companies that I could have bought that have uh, produced poor returns, I definitely think um, I probably overall made the right decision given the type of strategies that I run um, and because I don't usually do this tons of like deep research, right, where I'm going to understand the exact competitive advantages that these guys have. I'm really going to have confidence in management with something I basically never do unless it's Berkshire Hathaway or something. Um, so, so yeah, it's okay that um, it's not a good fit for me, but I mean, I don't have anything, you know, super negative. I probably wouldn't, 
I don't think I would even write like a bearish article on it, you know, um, because there's enough there that they could, I mean, it's not cheap, right? <laughs> and I don't think it's super, I mean, I think that there's definitely some risks there other than not being cheap, but there's nothing that's like a clear, like if I owned it, I would sell it type of a thing. If I owned it, I would probably just buy and hold it and see what happens at this point. Um, so there you go. If you're on the outside looking in at this one, I mean, I probably, it's not one I would probably jump in and buy unless, you know, things look good and you got down to that 20, 20 under 25 PE situation. Um, and you want, and a person wanted to step in with a smaller position, it's probably fine. Uh, but I don't have strong feelings one way or, <laughs> one way or another. All right. Hopefully you found this yeah, useful, at least some, a few things to think about, even if it's not specific to Quanta um, with some other construction and engineering businesses, because they can look really good sometimes uh, right before things go poorly. Um, and if you found this useful, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. If you have a stock you'd like me to take a look at, usually I do like a mathematical valuation. I'm not going to do that for these guys. Um, but just glancing at it, it looks valued about the same as the rest of the S&P 500. Um, and I'll see everybody later.